Hello, and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scudoboyo, playing vanilla Minecraft 15W39C of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC Edition. Uh, and this video is um, a little bit of a tour of this uh, uh, world that I created to help me test um, different regulators for item elevators. Um, this is something that uh, I wanted to throw out to the community for people to experiment with. Um, I had originally just made it for my own reference. Um, but it's turned out to be pretty useful for testing some things and, and so I thought maybe other people uh, might like to enjoy this. Um, so I'm going to give you a quick tour of this and I'll include a world download in the description uh, and then um, you can uh, play around with it if you like. Um, so um, uh, this uh, I'm using basically the same uh, the same circuitry for part of these elevators. Um, this is the circuitry that allows um, uh, items to go up. Let me go look at one of the completed ones down here. Um, so I'm I'm using a pressure plate that um, uh, pushes a piston up here, uh, along with a trapdoor combination. I had been using a um, a cobblestone wall here. But in the latest snapshot, I've been having a lot of uh, a lot of problems with that, with items spitting out when the piston pushes a block next to the cobblestone wall. I don't think that has to do with any changes to the cobblestone wall. I, I think it actually has to do with the way that um, uh, blocks are updating with respect to uh, pistons pushing them. Not entirely certain, but uh, but there are definitely some some issues there. So, at least for the time being, uh, I'm using trapdoors. Uh, but uh, uh, besides that, uh, uh, some design goals here. Uh, first, I, I want to make sure that all the circuitry is within a single chunk. Uh, so the area that I've given myself is only 16 blocks long. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's always narrower than that because you don't need that much space. But uh, including the elevator, uh, including the tower here, uh, and all the circuitry, I want it to fit within a single chunk. And the reason why is because um, in my experiments, uh, I've uh, I've noticed that I have a lot more items glitching out uh, if um, uh, if I have uh, um, uh, all the layout for the elevator uh, crossing chunks, uh, especially if the glass tower is uh, um, uh, occupies uh, spaces in more than one chunk. Uh, so I want to fit uh, everything within a single chunk. Uh, and I want um, all the signal from the circuitry. So um, if you see um, the, this wool down here, this represents the, um, uh, the circuitry volume. Uh, I want the signal to stay within that volume as well. Uh, now that's, uh, that's really just when practical. So um, if, uh, if uh, it turns out that it would be significantly more complicated to arrange the circuitry uh, and, uh, in order to make sure that the signal didn't leak out, um, then I'll let the signal leak out, but um, uh, that's, a, that's a design goal. Um, I also want to minimize the number of mechanisms, and, uh, including the amount of redstone in the circuitry, uh, and that's uh, just for, uh, for block updates. Uh, and I want the mechanisms to be synchronized when possible uh, in order to uh, have some kind of noise abatement. Because uh, before, when we just had the fence post elevators, that was, uh, of course, completely silent. Uh, now, if you're using mechanisms, of course, the mechanisms create noise, and, and that can be a little irritating. So uh, in, in addition to synchronized mechanisms, I, I want things running uh, only when there are items in the stream. Uh, so the, if there's nothing there, I want the elevators to be silent. Um, I also want to avoid comparators uh, when possible, and um, that's just a, a personal choice. I, I know that not everybody likes to uh, spend a lot of time in the nether. I know it only takes 10 minutes to you know head to the nether and get some quartz, but uh, um, generally speaking, I, I like to design my, net, my mechanisms without comparators when possible. Uh, and um, I want to uh, uh, make sure that the design of the circuitry uh, avoids mob spawnable spaces when practical. So um, those are the general design goals. Um, some uh, uh, my this legend over here. Uh, I'll just briefly run down that. Um, I have two circuits. There's one that I refer to as the levitator circuit. That's the uh, uh, that's the mechanisms that actually make uh, items go up the tower. Uh, and then there's a regulator circuit to control the uh, uh, the stream in order to allow the levitator circuit to do its job properly. Um, 
because I'm really concerned about uh, signal leaking out of the uh, of the volume of the circuitry, and the reason why I, I'm concerned about that is because uh, I have uh, some of these item elevators that are very very close to other stuff. Uh, and if uh, now that these guys need some signal, if I have signal leaking out of here, uh, then that's going to be a problem. So, uh, for example, uh, one of these elevators, I have um, uh, basically a line of hoppers um, uh, at the same level as the ice here. Uh, along uh, um, in this uh, in this row, and, and so if I have a signal that's leaking out that's uh, strongly powering any blocks up here next to the ice, uh, that's going to shut off my hoppers, and and so I, I need to make sure that um, uh, I'm taking care as to where the signal is going, and so when I um, uh, when I'm designing the circuitry, uh, I use uh, uh, my own convention here that I use uh, yellow wool for blocks that are strongly powered, uh, brown wool, uh, orange wool for blocks that are weakly powered, and brown wool for blocks that are unpowered. Um, also, if there are any places where you could put a block and it would cause a problem because it's strongly powered or weakly powered, I, I want to note that as well because sometimes I fill in the circuitry uh, with uh, with blocks, uh, and I and so there are places where I, I don't want blocks to be put. Uh, and uh, I'll also note wherever the signal actually uh, leaks out of the volume of the circuitry, um, uh, either high, uh, strongly powered or weakly powered. Um, so uh, I, I actually have three uh, elevator designs, or actually three regulator designs. Um, you can see the three down there. Um, uh, the uh, the one to the left is when you don't have any space beneath the uh, uh, the ice of the water channel. So, uh, if, for example, if uh, underneath the ice here was bedrock. Um, uh, that um, uh, that would prohibit the use of that design over there. So you'd have to go with something like this, or or if beneath the ice was uh, something that uh, uh, something that couldn't be moved, um, then uh, then you have to go over there as well. Um, uh, but otherwise, if there is space below, uh, then uh, I'm going to build this one, uh, and there are two variants of this one as well. Uh, if um, uh, you have, uh, if you're building it between layers 46 and 62, you're going to need to do uh, need to do this one uh, because this one over here has a space uh, that has too high too high water and that can allow squid spawning. So uh, I've basically got three variants of the elevators here, um, and I've got the uh, all the circuitry you know kind of laid out and um, uh, and labeled uh, for convenience. Uh, also, just uh, to make sure I don't forget stuff. Um, uh, and for all three of the completed elevators, um, I've um, this is mostly a test of the regulators because, like I said, uh, they all use the same uh, levitator circuitry and, and mechanisms, uh, and uh, that all works losslessly. Uh, um, honestly, I, <laughs> I have more loss due to um, uh, due to this collection area. I have items getting stuck in between the ender chests. <laughs> every once in a while, but um, uh, but uh, this uh, the levitator circuit works really really well. Most of this is just to test the regulator circuits, uh, because that's what actually is different about these three elevators. But um, uh, this is a convenient way to test um, these kind of elevators. Um, these um, uh, this little uh, 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 cap here <laughs> um, spits out uh, uh, basically runs a two minute test. Uh, of um, uh, of a stream that would have 90,000 items per hour, so it uh, comes at a pretty good clip. Um, it's kind of it's self-resetting, so you just press the button and it'll run the test. And when the test is finished, um, if everything made it up here, all the uh, all the lights will go on. Uh, and then if you want to run the test again, you just press the button again. You don't have to do anything else. So it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty easy. Um, but um, uh, that's really all I wanted to say in this video. Uh, just to give a little tour of this uh, this little world that I, I created for my own reference. Um, and just put it out there in case uh, anybody wanted to use it to experiment. Uh, and I guess that's it then for this video. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or suggestions, uh, please leave a note in the comments. And thanks for watching.